consider this control block diagram on the whiteboard so you have the reference the feedback comparison between them and the error which is actually going to the input of the controller and the controller is actually of two parts the game part and the structure part jc which is actually controlling the plant gp and there is a feedback portion which has an equivalent transfer function h so this is the generic block diagram control block diagram of a single input single output system and then we would like to do the root locus design so we have done that already using python we would like to implement the same using octave so the method is as we have done before we uh, define the plant gp we define h these are given to us and then you start by defining the structure of gc structure of the controller whether you want to have just uh, plain gain or you want to have uh, um, an integral um, type of control or a pi control or a pid type of a control so define the structure and then uh, we go about selecting the gain using the root locus method so let us try that so i will define some arbitrary gp and h for now h will take it as one by one gp we will start with uh, uh, what we have been using with other examples and define a structure gc and go through the process of obtaining k uh, for uh, the for a given plant using the root locus method and once we have um, uh, learned how to do the root locus method using octave we will then try to uh, use uh, a more practical uh, problem a system like the dc motor and then see how we can control it let us now try to uh, understand root locus design using octave by writing a skip file, script file i have on the left hand side here octave underscore r locus dot m which we had used earlier so i will uh, use the same i will start modifying that on the right hand side we have the octave id itself so let me uh, let me clean up let me remove these things let me start only with the transfer function so before that some comments are in order so let me write the comment so this this script file demonstrates we use of root locus method for designing digital controllers so this is our starting command then the required packages we need to load control we need to load the package signal and then lu control so then after that let us clear all variables and clear the screen clc will clear the screen and then now you define the transfer function of plat gp gp now now the numerator polynomial num and denominator polynomial these are in the con continuous domain this is the sampling uh, time uh, uh, 0.2 seconds and i am using my c2d continuous to discrete conversion and obtaining the discrete transfer function now this i am going to rename this is numerator gpd numerator polynomial of gp discrete denominator polynomial of gp discrete so n gpd and d gpd will define your gp system next let us uh, define the transfer function of 
feedback part H so let me call that as NH right now I'm going to keep it as 1 by 1 DH also 1 so it is just a unit gain block and so this is what we have so let us run this okay so let us run this and let me remove this delimiter semicolon so we will be able to see what is the numerator in the denominator polynomial or gp in the discrete domain so let me save that so i am i am already in the directory and let me run that octave r locus so you get ngpd and dgpd so if you if you want to see the transfer function so let us say sys gpd is equal to transfer function ngpd dgpd ts and you see the transfer function so this is the transfer function of that particular uh, of, of ngpd and dgpd in the form of uh, numerator and the denominator polynomials in z so next we need to decide on the structure of the controller GC then after that we need to decide the value of gain K so these two steps if we complete then we get the controller K G C. So deciding on the structure of the controller G C. Now this is a while loop. So while while something, and you will have end while. So in the beginning, let us have a flag equals while. So when the flag is yes it will be the uh, pointer will be within the while loop so let's say i do string compare case insensitive flag and y so what it does is it string compares this variable flag and the string character y and without k sensitiveness because of y then you will see that it will be 1 whenever flag is y and it will be within the while loop so in the while loop so we do the root locus of open loop system gph so let us find that first i will call it m gph i know the polynomial the numerator polynomial for, for gp is known no polynomial for h is known uh, so we will combine these two to get gph so it is nothing but polynomial multiplication and which is nothing but convolution convolve m gpd which is this with this so i will have polynomial multiplication and this will give me the numerator polynomial ngph of gp and h combined together likewise t gph is convolution or polynomial multiplication of d gpd and dh 
So this will give you uh, the numerator and the denominator polynomial of G P H. Next, transfer function of the controller G C. Now this has to be inputted every iteration. So M G C the numerator polynomial for the controller structure input enter numerator of G C polynomial vector. So in vector form. And you have it. So this will be displayed and you will be, it will ask the question, enter numerator of the GC polynomial vector. So you can enter the numerator polynomial and likewise the denominator polynomial. So what I will do, I will copy and paste and modify and this is denominator denominator of GC polynomial vector like this. So now you have entered the numerator and the denominator you have them both. So you need to get the entire loop GC GP H so that forms the entire loop. So numerator of GC GP H is convolution polynomial multiplication of N G P H into N G C. Likewise, D G C G P H convolution or polynomial multiplication of D G P H and D G C. So this will give you the loop transfer function of GC, GP, H. K alone is considered as 1. Now you are ready to plot the root locus of the loop transfer function. So let us have the background grid, my Z grid. This is taken from this LU control. And then after that, my R locus. So this is just only plotting the root locus. You are not going to extract any gain or closed loop pole information, just to give you an idea how it looks. The root locus. M, G, C, G, P, H. D, G, C, G, P, H. So this is the numerator, the denominator polynomial of the loop transfer function. So this will plot the root locus and then after that the question flag. Do you want to continue or do you want to exit the uh, decision uh, making on the structure of the controller. So it is again an input. So let us say modify GC structure, controller structure question. So is it an yes or a no? And it is a string. So you can indicate that it is a string. So it is very powerful the input statement. So based on what you enter, you enter y and it still continues in the while loop and then it will allow you to edit the numerator and the denominator polynomial of the controller GC till you are satisfied with the structure and then you can exit the while loop. Let us validate the script that we have written till now. Previously we validated till this point, loading the various packages, defining the transfer function GP and H. Then we wrote this part of the code where we wanted to decide the structure of the controller 
which is in a while loop. So let us do that and check if the code is working properly or are there any bugs that we need to debug. So let me type octave r locus. Okay. So the first part is that it has cleared the screen and then cleared all the variables. You see that there is no variable in the workspace. It's now fresh. Enter the numerator of the GC polynomial vector. So which means that right now it is here. The pointer is here and we need to enter the uh, numerator polynomial of the controller structure. So let me put it as one by one for now. So one by one and uh, next enter the denominator polynomial. So that also is one. On executing the root locus is plotted and as expected we know this uh, familiar root locus for this particular transfer function. On the background you see that you have the z plane coming in. Now here the um, program is waiting, it is still in the while loop and it is querying, let me uh, move this up, it is here, it is querying modify GC structure, yes or no. So let us say that I would like to modify further and again I will enter the uh, uh, numerator the denominator polynomial of the controller. So now let me change the structure. So let me put a 0 here at z is equal to 1 and a pole at z is equal to 0. So you will see that the root locus will be attracted towards this because you have put a place the 0 here. So let us say uh, 0 at z is equal to 1 which is z minus 1 that is a polynomial and then for the denominator z is equal to 0 so we have the denominator polynomial so let me execute that so you see the modification that happens to the root locus and you see that it is pulled into the unit circle and here the program is waiting whether you want to modify the controller structure further or not. So you can keep on iterating it till you are satisfied and then you can come out. So let me give n, no, I do not want to continue further and I come. So we know that the script that we have written till this point, let me close this, is working. So we need to do the next part which is decide on the value of the gain k which will complete our controller uh, uh, the entire controller design aspect so right now here you have decided on the structure gc and if you also have the gain k k gc will form the controller so let us write the program uh, script for that part of uh, the program So now that we are able to get the structure, we can now uh, write the script for obtaining the gain k. So I have moved up the file a bit so that it is visible. So here again we will have a while loop. So I will use the flag variable. I will make flag variable as y and while string compare case insensitive flag and y and we will have the end while to complete the loop. So within inside, we will, let's say, I will display, I will do the display function. 
so let me display on the screen select closed loop whole location so this is the job that we want to do and then let it come out to the screen so that we can pick from the root locus that is displayed so we close the root locus and then again uh, redo the rewrite the root locus so for that my z grid put in the z plane as a background and this time we will want the k value and the close loop pole locations that we click and now I will use R loc find. So here I am going to use R loc find which we discussed earlier. And uh, what is the transfer function that you want to uh, pass? The numerator and the denominator of the loop transfer function. So M G C G P H and D G C G P H. So this is what you will be passing the entire loop transfer function GC the structure of the controller GP the plant transfer function and H the feedback portion transfer function. K is the only aspect which is not there and that is what we would like to find out from the root locus. So uh, all this is there GC GP H which, which we have already calculated here and then passing it on. So my rloc find will also give you a cursor, crosshair cursor where you can go and click and k and p are picked. p is just for display to know where the closed loop pole locations are. k you will use further to do a validation. So we want n close, n close is numerator polynomial of the closed loop transfer function g by 1 plus g h d close so closed loop uh, polynomial uh, the uh, closed loop numerator and the denominator polynomials of g by 1 plus g h so i will use the feedback command to obtain the closed loop transfer function convolution i am going to multiply the polynomial n g c this is the G C and N G P D into K and uh, convolution D G C D G P D. So this is the this is the numerator and the denominator polynomials of the feed forward path gc gp k is also in the feed forward path k gc gp so k is going to multiply only in the numerator polynomial of ngc and ngpd and then you have the feedback path transfer function nh dh so you can find out a bit more about the feedback uh, function by putting help feedback in the octave environment. Now after that, now that you have the closed loop transfer function, you can check with a step response check. So do a step response for n close, n close, d close of the closed loop transfer function. It should settle at uh, whatever you have designed for so if it is a unit step it will and the error is zero it will settle ultimately at uh, uh, one and then you can observe both the transient response part and the steady state response part so this will uh, uh, conclude the this while and then we can ask the question do you want to continue uh, continue iterating on the value of k or you want to quit and close because you are satisfied. So select different 
gain k yes or no and this is a string so let us say that we need to enter a string So this completes this while loop and after the while what is it that you want? I want it to display k, I want it to display the controller system transfer function tf ngc dgc in the discrete domain using the z domain numerator and denominator polynomial. So this would complete the octave script. Let me save that first. Let us now validate this octave script file and check for this last portion that we added on deciding the value of the gain k from the root locus. So let us do that. So I will go to the right side in the octave IDE and type in this octave file name octave r locus so let us enter the numerator polynomial i will for now write one and the denominator polynomial also one it's a one by one simple uh, controller structure let me now come out of this while while loop so i will give no then come out. So immediately the uh, root locus is again reprinted asking us here select closed loop pole location on this. So for me to choose a pole location I will have to I, I will click somewhere here within the unit circle as close to the pole location and here so that it remains within the unit circle. So let us click that. So you see that where I have clicked is k is equal to 1.6643 and the closed loop pole locations are almost 0 0.9 plus or minus 0.35. And you see this highly oscillatory nature because this is close to the unit circle very under damp and uh, settles down somewhere in between 0.4 and 0.5 close to 0.5. So it is not actually, this is just a one by one controller, it is not a PI controller uh, where you get zero steady state error. This is just a pure gain controller where the controller is just K into GC. K in this case is, so let us say I come out of this. So you have K 1.66 and the controller is 1. So it is just a plain K, uh, K GC is nothing but uh, just a gain of 1.66. So it is uh, going to definitely have an error and that is why it is not going to 1. So this is the step response that you get. So this is how you would go about doing a root locus gain selection and apparently what we have just seen that the gain selection is working. Now let us try with a real example, a real practical example like a DC motor and uh, see if we can uh, design uh, a PI or a PID controller for the same. In order to include the model of a plant, a generic complex model of the plant, I need to look at this portion. See, we have used a very simple transfer function here and then generated NGPD and DGPD. But this uh, can be a complex transfer function and this can probably be a function or another script file. So what I will do is let me for the moment comment out these lines. So these lines are commented out and instead I will say let's say we want to model a DC motor. So I'll say DC motor. So I'll call a DC motor script. We will do that. This script we have not yet written. So let's say the DC motor script, the function of this script. So I'm calling a script within a script. You can also call a function 
uh, but octave uh, in octave uh, calling a script with a script is a powerful way of uh, preserving the globalness of the variables so this dc motor uh, script we shall uh, uh, write just now and uh, to do that okay, let me first save this and i will open another new file and i will save this as uh, uh, dc motor dc motor dot m file okay so we will save that and it is a blank file so now let us start uh, uh, writing the script here so let me say this is this is a script file to uh, provide the plant model in this case the model of a DC model so for this so let me now let's say display so I will display a string which says the values of the plant DC motor parameters so this will get displayed so let's say RA 2 ohms LA 0 0.5 and units of Henry's so then uh, KT constant or constant for the motor 0 0.1 I'm using the same uh, values that I had used for Python so neuter meter for amp then you have the B the friction coefficient 0 0.2 this is what I had used <coughs> and uh, J the inertia part 0 0.02 kg meter square per second square and then the TS the sample time so let me include the sample time also here in the specification 0 seconds so the small signal model of the DC motor we have already seen DC motor we have discussed this in previous uh, lectures so I'm just going to write that so continuous model AC AC so this is RA by LA minus KT by LA the next row KT by J minus B by J so this is the A matrix AC matrix and you have the BC which is 1 by LA 0 next row 0 minus 1 by J so this is the uh, B matrix I will close that then uh, C matrix all continuous domain uh, values which I am trying to indicate so we are taking the output which is the uh, uh, vec the state vectors in this case here i and omega we are taking it are taking the output as omega bc and that is keeping zero no direct feed forward component so this is the state space model of the plot which is the DC motor I can uh, also give here U label, label of 
label of the inputs what are the inputs v voltage and tl these are the input labels so when you print the matrices it will do pretty printing y labels so y labels is nothing but output omega and x labels so you have ia as one of the state vector omega as another state vector so these are the labels okay so now the continuous the continuous time transfer function of the dc motor so what is this so i will say tf so as a tf dc now it's a tf dc the zero pole form zero pole gain form can do that and then i will use the tf command function and then inside i need to use the system the state space which is ac bc c c d c so that will give me a system the state space system and then i will use the tf to convert it into the transfer function form and then finally i will and finally i will display it as pole zero form gain pole zero form so that is zpk an interesting uh, function to i will not give a semicolon we can see what that is if i do not give a semicolon it will get displayed on the screen so next another conversion let us do conversion from continuous to discrete domain so the discrete domain matrices a b c d these are the discrete domain matrices which i would like to have my c to d recall that i'm using my c to t again here last time when we use my c to d for transfer function i gave numerator polynomial denominator polynomial i can give the state matrices also ac dc cc and dc along with sample time so i pass all these parameters and i obtain the uh, discrete domain state matrices so just like we argued in the uh, python while uh, doing uh, the python uh, model modeling of the dc motor tl input is considered as disturbance so the v input or the armature voltage input is considered as input to the system so i'll just indicate that here so that we don't forget so we take the b matrix and we take the row the columns uh, 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 all rows of column one the corresponding to the v input and the d also we will consider only with respect to one of the sorry d all rows of the first column same thing here also all rows of the first column so you are considering the armature voltage only as the input so next we need to get the ngpd and dgpd so this you are getting from state space to transfer function 
from A, B, C, D. Modified B and modified D is used. And this will give the numerator and the denominator polynomial of the discrete Warsha transfer uh, discrete transfer function uh, uh, of the DC motor. So this is what will be used further for doing the root locus design. So the discretized version of the plant of the DC motor plant is here, and this is the numerator polynomial, and this is the denominator polynomial. So some amount of displaying can also be done. So let's say display. So I will say display the transfer function in Z domain. I can use that. Okay. So it's a T as a transfer function of the DC motor in the Z domain is equal to ZPK. I can use that. TF NGPD DGPD. Yes. So that will give you a display in zero pole form. So I can also print this pretty print in the uh, print in the state uh, the state equations. I will print this A B C D u labels y labels x labels so this is nice way of uh, seeing the state uh, state equations of any system so that is why we have used these three labels here so you will see when you see the output so let me save that so this is the DC motor uh, script which will give you the model of the system. We can run this and then see how this looks like. Let us now check out this script file. Let us validate this model. Let us run it in the Octave environment. So on the right side we have the Octave window, Octave environment window here open and I will type in the DC motor file name. So when I execute that, so you see here the values of the DC motor parameters displays here, values of DC motor parameters, RA, LA, all those things, uh, all those values are displayed so you get an idea what it is uh, uh, and then followed by the small signal model. So this is the small signal model, model followed by that is the continuous time transfer function of the DC motor. Now that continuous time transfer function you have two because you have two inputs. One is the armature voltage input and the other one is the torque input which we are considering it as a disturbance input that is TFDC, TFDC here. So the state space is having uh, a dual input. Then followed by that you have the uh, transformation conversion into the discrete domain TF DC Z and for that we are considering only one input and that input is uh, uh, the armature voltage input and we are not considering the TL input so that is what we have done here so this NGPD and DG, uh, GPD which you are getting is single input single output so this is the transfer function of the DC motor plant with uh, uh, input as uh, armature voltage and the output is omega and here you see this print sys so which you are um, uh, which you are able to see the state space formulation or the state space um, the model of the DC motor plant. So you have the A matrix. These labels are pretty useful here. You see the state uh, vector and uh, uh, you have the B, the input vector, V, only V here and the state vector. Same way here for C and D also. So it uh, gives you a nice, uh, a nice uh, visual feel for the 
uh, model of the system. So that is why we used these labels and this parenthesis. So this is uh, the uh, DC motor model and uh, you can have more complex models and then you can put them in a file, script file like this. And what we have done with that model, so we are going to call that as uh, a script within this root locus controller design script. So we have put that in there. So that is how you would use um, plant models probably designed by others, probably designed uh, which need a separate file because they may be pretty complex. You can uh, have a separate file for that and then call them here. So now we will run the root locus design script or tail or locus and see uh, how we can design a compensator or a controller, discrete controller for this. I shall now go into the DC motor script file and I shall put a semicolon here so that I don't want to see the transfer function, continuous domain transfer function now. And uh, I can also comment out the princess so that for the moment it doesn't display on the screen and clutter up the screen. I would like to see the transfer function here. Probably I would also like to see the parameters here. So let us save that. Then go to the oct octave or locus that is the root locus design script file. We have the DC motor here and in the octave screen I will say clear screen and that is clear. So let us run this octave or locus and do a controller compensator design using the root locus method. I will call now octave or locus. So the DC motor plant script file has executed and these are the plant parameters and you have the transfer function here. And after doing the transfer function, so it has come here and requesting us to enter the numerator of the controller polynomial. So if I put 1 and 1 for both the numerator and the denominator, so you will see the root locus of this plant. So it has two poles and uh, it has one one zero here so one zero is other zero is at infinity now i don't want to do just a plain gain controller so let us do a pid controller one integrator and um, you uh, one integrator and also a lead network so uh, for this i will want to modify the structure let me go at it again so the numerator will have two zeros the pid and you will have two poles uh, so let me put in the two zeros so i will give it as convolution and there are two two zeros so first zero so first zero is um, z minus 0.95 so I am trying to break this pattern here I am going to break this pattern here 1 0 uh, uh, 1 0 I am going to place close to this pole another 0 I am going to place close to this pole so that I break this and try to bring the root locus inside but if I break this by placing zeros here I need to place poles so one pole I will place here as an integrator pole and another pole I will place here at z is equal to 0. So that is the plan. So at around 0.95 and 0.9 I will place zeros. So 1 comma minus 0 0.9510 zero. another 0 will be 1 comma minus 0 0.9 so it is at that point so that I will split that uh, split the root locus at that point so that the poles terminate at the nearby 0 
So then the denominator. So the denominator convolution I need two poles here also. So the two poles are the first one I am going to place at z is equal to 1 or z minus 1 minus 1 and z is equal to 0 like this. So these are the two poles of the denominator polynomial of the control. So this is a control structure, this is a PID control structure. So let me uh, execute that. So you will see that, you see here that this has, maybe you could zoom that, you will see here the zeros that I have placed. There is one zero that I have placed here. I have placed a pole z is equal to 1, so that comes in and terminates at the 0, 0, 0.950 which I placed here, the 0 0.950. Then there is one pole 0 0.92 of the plant and it will terminate at 0 0.9, there is a 0 0.90 which I placed here. So that is broken up now and uh, and we can use this structure. So let me go forward. So let me come out of this while loop of uh, iterating the control structure. Now let us go and choose the gain. So this is the root loci. So let me choose a gain somewhere uh, inside close at this at this point here. So let me select that. So the gain is 78.686 and these are the closed loop pole locations. Four, you see there are already two poles by the plant, two poles by the controller and therefore overall there will be four poles. These are the four closed loop poles. So this is the, you see that it is going to the st steady state at one and that's a very good response. So you can choose different gains also. So let us say we try another example here. Let me say I want to choose a different gain. It means that yes. So you can probably choose something here and choose that. So gain is 103 and you see that slightly faster response. So like that you can do and I will come out of this loop and this is the controller. So you have gain of 103, approximately 100 and the controller is of this form, denominator z square minus z or z minus 1 into uh, z and the numerator having these two zeros. So this is the controller. So this is how you go about designing. Uh, PID controller or a P controller or even a simple K control, proportional control for any given plant and how you model the plant and call them within the root locus script.